On today's Daily Detroit, we're going to give you a roundup of interesting stories around town. So from a cold north end in the beautiful Motor City, it's Thursday, February 27th, 2020. I'm Jer Stays. And I'm Cheyenne Nocerini. You know, it's a cold day when you're drinking hot coffee, Jer. This, this is a true statement. Wasn't it another snow day for your kid? Yes, it sure was. You know, as a kid, I don't remember having this many snow days. I don't know if listeners do, but I don't remember all these, Shy. Well, that's because we walked uphill both ways in six feet of snow to school, just like our parents did and their parents before them. And, you know, they weren't wearing any shoes back then. First up, the Kwame Kilpatrick saga never seems to leave this town. The latest is a potential mayoral candidate... Democrat Sherry Gay Dagnano has written a letter to Donald Trump she plans to personally present to the president. In it, she will ask for Kilpatrick's freedom, much like Ron Blagojevich out of Illinois or Bernie Carrick. It's not clear when this letter would be delivered, but she wouldn't be the first to be pushing for a lighter sentence for the former mayor, who is currently serving 28 years on corruption charges. As we've talked about before, CompuWare founder and billionaire Peter Carmanos has also made public his leaning into President Trump for clemency, as well as some select community leaders. Look, I get it. People are talking about this. But Jer, I think it's time we move on. All right, you have thanks. I have a lot of thanks. Maybe Kwame is serving too long of a sentence, but the overall fascination with this guy is insane. I don't even like that you did this story as it's clearly a move to get press by someone who wants to run for mayor. And as a Democrat wanting to give ammo to Donald Trump, I think her party needs to look into that. Kilpatrick is a convicted criminal who, although is charming, hurt this city and region. I think people continue to forget about that. And Kwame Kilpatrick is like that bad boyfriend Detroit just can't seem to stop thinking about. I get it. I was fascinated with him in college. I, I really was. I wanted to work in his office when I was studying public policy, but I was also young and dumb. Kwame is bad for you, Felicia. He cheated on you and he stole your money. I know he's hot. I know it. But stop being hypnotized. He was fun, but let him go. Let him go. And yes, There is a major problem with incarceration and people of color, but Kwame Kilpatrick is not your poster child for this, and it doesn't help the cause. Let's do real reform and free the thousands of people on low-level marijuana convictions and give them job training before we let this guy out. The city of Detroit's financial health has improved, according to the Moody's Rating Service. On Wednesday, the city's rating outlook was improved from stable to positive, citing increased income tax receipts from more affluent residents moving in and additional jobs. However, the picture isn't all roses. Here's a quote from Moody's statement. Detroit's recovery is real, but so too are serious lingering economic challenges. An influx of affluent residents and a return of employers downtown has led to a surge in income taxes, an important revenue source for the city. However, citywide income levels remain very weak and poverty remains high compared to other large cities. Operationally, the city is being more responsible than in the past with spending. However, there's a big pension payment coming in 2024 after a 10-year delay after municipal bankruptcy. Also, Moody says the city is still very dependent on the automotive and manufacturing industries and needs to diversify. Its socioeconomic profile, according to Moody's, is one of the weakest among cities in the United States. This is good news, but we need a lot more businesses coming in. I mean, that's the thing, Shy. Like, I've looked at these numbers, and I get that, like, people are concerned about, like, big money coming in. But uh, here, here's the hard part about this question. There's just simply not enough money in the system for stuff to come back, Shy. Like, there's just not enough people hiring. There just aren't enough jobs to fill all those things. There needs to be more money and more opportunities. And, like, like I've said before, like, I don't think we know what a boom really is. I think we both lived in other cities that were growing pretty fast. And we have no idea what a boom is around here. We really don't. And it's one day, maybe we will. The Detroit Free Press is reporting that there are Macomb County lawmakers looking to opt out of the Detroit Institute of Arts Millage up for renewal early next month. A bill introduced by Republican State Representative Steve Yerich out of Richmond in Macomb County would let individual cities in Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb opt out of whatever regional tax, much like what can happen with the smart bus system today. 
I'd note that Macomb voters only very narrowly passed the DIA millage in 2012, and it may be very close again. Yerich's district, the 33rd, voted against the arts millage. You know, doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. Why does Macomb County residents hate nice things? I mean, it's not all Macomb County residents, obviously, but yeah, there is definitely not the same spirit of cooperation over there. If you just look at the voting data, especially in northern parts of the county, but in general, there just isn't, whether it's transit, whether it's whether it's the arts, I mean, this is something that I, look, I, I don't want this to happen, but if Macomb County wants to go on their own, I mean, there's kind of part of me, there's kind of part of me shy that like, Wants them to just, just go do it. Like, let's just do something equally as absurd in response, though. Like, let's put toll roads on, like, county roads. So, like, if you live in Macomb County and work downtown, you got to pay five bucks every day. Like, if you want to do this user fee thing, if you want to be on your own, like, how about let's double the parking fees for Macomb County residents at the Wayne County Airport? I like I mean, it. I mean, it's crazy. It is it's, crazy. It's not a great idea. But it's you a know terrible what? idea, but so is this. But you know what? They would be so mad. If we actually did that and call them out on it. Here's the thing. The millage for the DIA helps pay for students to go and learn about art. Well, and there's a story later in the show because there's actually art throughout the region that the DIA actually exactly. actually the, does. The it, DIA Inside Out. Mm -hmm. It's a great program. So if you don't want art and you don't want to be cultured, then don't go. And now onto some food and development news around town. There's a listing that popped up for Polonia Restaurant in Hamtramck. The longtime Polish restaurant at 2934 Yemen's is for sale for $450,000. The restaurant opened in the mid-1930s and has had the same owner since 1986. The sale would include all inventory, equipment, liquor license, and a full-size delivery van with the right offer. Also for sale around town... The soon-to-be-closed Craftwork in Detroit's West Village. They're asking $300,000 right now, according to a listing document we found online. We'll put a link to both listings in the show notes. You know, I must admit I'm a Polish village guy. I have some good Polonia memories. Generally, I went there when Polish village was full, to be honest. Although, Polonia has those uh, little cherry shots. Right. Maybe the future owners can put some new life into it. The liquor license alone is valuable, let alone like it's like 5,800 square feet or something crazy like that. It's a big old building. It is a big old building. I kind of wish it had more windows. Me too. To and be honest. Updated. Yeah, it needs it needs some love. But you know what? You need money to love it. So, I mean, hopefully we can get some, some more Polish action. That would be great. That would be great. Could Metro Detroit get a permanent Chicago-style Italian beef joint? The duo behind the Matt and Moe's Italian beef food truck has kicked off a Kickstarter to open a brick-and-mortar location in Hazel Park. They're looking to raise $24,000 to help with their startup costs for three months of operation, including their lease, utilities, building expenses, labor, payroll, and inventory. As of this recording, they've already pulled in nearly $2,300. It's kind of a neat story because uh, the couple and their daughter actually also live in Hazel Park. If you're not familiar with Italian beef, I personally find it quite tasty. I know it can be quite divisive. Um, it has shaved beef and a variety of peppers and... You know, they do it with an au jus. The couple, one half being from Michigan, well, they met in Chicago and managed a variety of restaurants. The pair says, if you add them both up, that they have more than 40 years of experience in the industry. This is part of their pitch to say that they're a good bet. They've been doing Matt and Moe's for five years and have been a regular at Detroit Fleet in Ferndale. But here's the thing, that's seasonal and it's kind of hard to like build a business without uh, winter traffic. And I'll tell you, a warm Italian beef sounds pretty good right about now. If successful, they plan to open in April of this year. Jer, I love stories of independents working to make it. We'll put a link in the show notes. Royal Oak Commissioners have approved plans for City Ramen, a noodle shop on Main Street in downtown, to use a liquor license. This means sake and other interesting drinks are coming to the 43-seat shop. According to the Oakland Press, the shop transferred another license, which no longer requires direct city approval, in this case, it was from a mod pizza location in Rochester Hills. However, there were no objections to serving booze reported by law enforcement. I know that's been very controversial in downtown Royal Oak. There was that Taco Bell that was supposed to be a cantina and serve booze that never got their license and it kind of, you know, killed their plans. 
it is unclear when the booze will begin to be poured at City Ramen. Earlier in the show, we talked about the Detroit Institute of Arts. Well, this last story involves them too, but in downtown Plymouth. They've designed a sculpture working with their DDA and the Plymouth Community Arts Council for Kellogg Park across from the Wilcox House. The cost to the city of Plymouth will be for maintenance and insurance. The Wilcox House is an interesting story as one, it's beautiful, and two, it was built by the co-founder of the Daisy Air Rifle Company, William Markham, in 1903. Oh my God, I shot my eye out. For most of the home's existence, it was owned by the Wilcox family. And for a short time during World War II, it was converted to apartments. I'll put a link to the sculpture plans in the show notes. It's neat and has some nods to Plymouth history. And we're done for today. We have some great shows lined up for you. I'm heading to East Point to talk to their mayor about what's happening there. I'm I'm excited to do that. And of course, much, much more. By the way, thanks to our patron supporters at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. Independent media requires independent funding, and we are thankful for everyone who has stepped up. With that, I'm Cheyenne Nocerini. And I'm Jarris Days. Take care of each other, and we'll see you around Detroit.